Thank you. So yes, uh, so as Nikki uh, very kindly already did the, the introduction, my name is Nieves. And uh, so what I'm going to present here today are the results of two studies that I conducted as part of my PhD in collaboration with uh, Mason San Frontier, MSF, in uh, a project, a nutritional project that they have in Northeast Nigeria. Um, and they wanted to look at the management of infants under six months uh, uh, that were admitted in their malnutrition programs. Okay, so you can see how the presentation is changing, right? Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to spend much time in the background because here everyone is very well uh, um, aware of the importance of, of this topic. Um, and I'm just going to jump uh, to, to say, to talk a little bit about the context. Um, so this project was proposed by, by MSF um, due to the needs that they had in this, uh, in the north, in a project in Maiduguri, Borno State, in the northeast uh, part of Nigeria, which is um, a protracted uh, emergency setting with long-standing conflict, very recurrent epidemics, and very high rates of malnutrition, especially in the in the seasonal uh, peaks. So the rationale to to do studies there um, were to better understand how the management of malnourished infants under six months um, was working in the in this project, including the identification of factors that were associated with inpatient and outpatient or ambulatory uh, treatment outcomes and also exploring concerns raised by the field team about poor infant feeding practices and the challenges to promote uh, and support breastfeeding in that, in that setting. So we worked, uh, this work was planned in collaboration with the team in the field and also Luxor, which is the operational research unit uh, uh, of uh, MSF in Brussels. Um, so we were for, yeah, uh, quite a long time looking at uh, and what were the needs there and the protocols and everything, and decided to do two studies. One qualitative study that explored uh, breastfeeding practice and support among caregivers of infants under six months from both caregivers and health workers' perspectives. And the second one was a qualitative uh, study, a quantitative uh, retrospective study to describe the characteristics and treatment outcomes of infants age one to five months admitted at the MSF inpatient therapeutic feeding center and ambulatory uh, therapeutic feeding center and identify the factors associated with treatment outcomes. So the setting, uh, which is this hospital in the, in the presentation, uh, is the Nilefa Gayi Hospital in, in Maduguri. Um, and uh, to explain you a bit how it works, the protocol for the management there, all uh, infants under six months that are identified as malnourished uh, or at risk are directly um, admitted in the inpatient ward. So no, no infants are treated um, in the community or outpatient base uh, in a first uh, instance. So all are admitted, stabilized for uh, nutritional and uh, treatment of comorbidities. The nutritional treatment um, mainly is uh, the provision of diluted F100 uh, therapeutic milk by supplementary suckling and encouraging breastfeeding on demand. Then decreasing therapeutic milk um, as uh, infant uh, puts on weight and increasing breastfeeding and, and so on. And at the same time, caregivers receive in the world adequate nutrition, supplementation, nutritional supplementation, mental health support, and intensive lactation support uh, for breastfeeding. Then um, the ambulatory treatment center uh, consists in weekly consultations. For, it's always with infants that have been discharged from the inpatient ward. So the treatment is uh, they have weekly consultations basically checking anthropometry. Um, caregivers have the chance to report comorbidities or feeding difficulties. And if there is any health concern or feeding uh, practice concerns, they are referred for support at the facility. 
And the, the, during these weekly consultations, they are also provided breast milk substitutes uh, formula if uh, the child uh, cannot breastfeed. And the mothers also receive uh, nutritional supplements. So now uh, I will take you to the, to the result of the studies. The study one was the qualitative study looking at uh, breastfeeding support among this, uh, this population. Uh, for the methods, we use uh, qualitative um, in-depth interviews, focus group discussion, and non-participant observations. Uh, the participants were recruited at MSF facility, uh, uh, both attending to the ambulatory program or admitted in the inpatient one, and also in one IDP camp. Uh, and the data uh, was analyzed using reflexive thematic analysis. In total, we included 32 participants um, with 18 in-depth interviews with mothers, uh, grandmothers that were um, who were wet nurses, one grandfather and one clinical manager. And uh, we did four group discussions with different uh, profiles of um, health workers that were working at this project, including both clinical and also health promotion staff. Here's is, is just a picture of uh, one uh, one patient that was receiving supplementary suckling with this um, syringe because the, the the infant was still very very weak to to suckle. Just to to show you some picture. Um, and okay, this is for the results of that study. Um, in this study, we found that breastfeeding practice. I mean, basically, this is something that we. We all know, but it's re reinforced in this in this study that breastfeeding decisions were normally not based uh, so much on mother's uh, wishes or decisions, but most um, mostly based on family decisions, what the parents-in-law said or the husband said, and also influenced by traditional beliefs, practices, sometimes delaying the start of breastfeeding or um discouraging the use of calostrum or discouraging breastfeeding if there were some beliefs of spiritual illnesses etc and the, the second finding about breastfeeding practice main finding that we saw is that there was a very extended um belief of breastfeeding uh, insufficiency that led to mixed feeding so in this setting um it's estimated that around less than 30% of women um, provide exclusive breastfeeding until uh, until uh, six months. Uh, most of them breastfeed to a certain extent, but most of them give at least water because it's a very dry uh, setting and very warm. Uh, and also they give porridge and different kind of liquids and, and even foods. And this is one of the reasons why they think think um, they don't have enough breast milk or they cannot produce enough or enough quality is due to uh, poor maternal nutrition because it's a setting affected by high food insecurity. So food and, and water are, are very scarce. Uh, so in terms of treatment, um, in terms of breastfeeding support in the inpatient world, there were some challenges identified. First one was that mothers, when they arrived, they weren't they arrived with their kids that were sick or malnourished and they were not expecting uh, to have breastfeeding support uh, they were expecting to have formula so they could give to their children and they could get better so it took a while to um, uh, increase uh, mother's self-efficacy and make them understand that breastfeeding was was uh, breastfeeding uh, relaxation and and their establishment of breastfeeding was part of the treatment. Um, there was also a challenge with uh, different uh, cultural backgrounds of the health staff and the mothers, uh, some language barriers also, and also the fact that uh, the establishment of breastfeeding was in some cases taking very long and mothers didn't want it to stay admitted in the facility for, for very long. So that was um, a challenge also. Uh, at the end, uh, we found that mothers were happy. Ac most of mothers accepted uh, to receive this breastfeeding support and um, 
and do frequent breastfeeding, uh, uh, take uptake recommendations from the staff. And they were thankful because they saw that their children were, were improving and they were also improving their health because they were um, uh, they were in good in good care there. Also, there were some dilemmas among the um, uh, health workers because they were doubting when was the limit uh, of uh, trying breastfeeding support and not being able to achieve it. And then, uh, so, so when they should give infant formula, at what uh, stage they should declare uh, that breastfeeding support fail, uh, kind of. So that was on the inpatient, the, the, the findings of breastfeeding in the inpatient setting. And what uh, they were highlighting about uh, afterwards is that everyone, there was a general feeling among the health workers that mothers will uh, fail to continue breastfeeding in some cases because of lacking the uh, constant encouragement of the staff, also the peer support from the other mothers, and especially for mm, due to not being able to eat well. And this is something that also mothers were uh, or caregivers were concerned about, like how can I keep on breastfeeding my child and producing breast milk if I am not having what I had in the in the facility? So the, these were the main uh, discussion points. Uh, here uh, there are some quotes that can illustrate this, for example, from a mother. Giving breast milk only is the best, but most women are not able to produce enough breast milk for the baby. So that's why I decided to introduce formula. Um, a wet nurse uh, that was coming for a for a for a um, consultation in the in the ambulatory center. She said, "When I was in the facility, they gave us food, and this helped uh, to start producing breast milk. But when I went back home, because I could not afford to buy this kind of food and eat, the supply of the milk is going down." Um, and clinical staff said, "One once the child is still on medication, they are normally okay. They refer to uh, to receive uh, lactation support. But once the medication finishes um, and they are in the facility and the child is not sick, they feel like, why are we still here? Referring like they don't see the purpose to stay just to reestablish exclusive breastfeeding. So uh, as conclusions, uh, we highlighted that the perception of breast milk insufficiency linked to poor maternal nutrition was a very common barrier to breastfeeding in this setting. And this was after this study, there, was, there, were, there were a lot of discussions with the health promotion uh, group, uh, nutrition referent, uh, pediatric referent in MSF, to see how this message and, and this, this information about maternal nutrition can be best balanced in this setting, so mothers can can breastfeed safely. Um, also, uh, we saw that breastfeeding promotion and support in this program contributed to improvement in, in breastfeeding practice and was positively valued overall by caregivers. A key factor for uh, enabling this acceptance and success of breastfeeding support was the integration as part of the management of malnutrition. And uh, it was uh, brought up by many by many health workers that uh, there needs to be support and follow up of infants under six months in the community to avoid to avoid relapses or or to avoid um, losing what were the, the all the efforts gained in terms of uh, breastfeeding when during the inpatient time. And so that was the first study, uh, more with qualitative findings. And then we did a second study, this, qualita this quantitative one. Uh, for that, we use routinely collected data at inpatient and uh, ambulatory center uh, from 2019 till 2022. And did descriptive statistics to describe the cohort. And then univariate uh, and multivariate logistic regression to measure the association between two selected outcomes, which were mortality, inpatient mortality, and defaulting um, from the ambulatory uh, program. So in terms of results, um, here, is, here are the ones from the inpatient uh, program. 9.5% of total admissions of uh, in, in the whole uh, nutrition center 
this nutrition center in Meduguri were for infants under six months. A majority of these uh, infants were um, severely malnourished and most of them presented comorbidities, uh, most commonly diarrhea and respiratory infections. In terms of the charge outcomes, um, almost 73% were stabilized and referred to ADFC, 13.3% were cured. Um, as referring, they didn't have to go back to ADFC because they were already uh, stabilized for comorbidities and had um, normal anthropometry. 6.5% uh, left against medical advice from the inpatient ward and 4.2% died. Median length of stay went, were, uh, was 10 days. And the factors associated with uh, inpatient mortality uh, were a hospital stay shorter than 10 days. And uh, when in the, um, in the chart, the main diagnosis leading to admission was stated as other, which highlighted some problems in in data collection there. Uh, so for the ambulatory uh, program, the outpatient program, this was uh, infants under six months accounted for 3% of total uh, ambulatory admissions in the hospital. Uh, still, almost 70% when they arrived into the ambulatory program were still um, severely malnourished, but they only had comorbidities in 2.8% of the cases. Um, almost 81% were cured uh, on this charge, 1642 defaulted, and 1% died. And the factors associated with program defaulting were male sex, um, IDP status, and uh, infant uh, being severely malnourished, according to wait for length on admission. So here I just show you a quick slide on anthropometry to show that um, anthropometry measurements were, um, uh, yes, not very well taken. So when we did data cleaning, uh, uh, for example, for the um, inpatient uh, data, we we had to exclude 21.7% uh, of patients if we look at data cleaning criteria for wait for age and 26.5% for weight for length. And MOAC was, it's only measuring some infants. So it's not systematically measured for all infants. In ADFC, anthropometry was uh, better taken, maybe because children were feeling better or also the staff have different skills for uh, anthropometry measurements. So this is something that was also discussed afterwards. So in conclusion, um, we saw that the protocol used for the management of malnourished infants uh, is leading to acceptable stabilization and recovery rates um, for what is considered a protracted emergency setting. Um, we also saw that effectively the, um, the approach to use different, uh, different uh, criteria for the identification and assessment of um, infants under six months uh, at risk of poor growth and development should not solely be, be based on anthropometry, but in more um, uh, comprehensive uh, components. And uh, also as a highlight um, was this uh, finding of the, the high defaulting from IDFC program that should be more, more, more closely monitored and specifically looking at children that arrived uh, severely malnourished in the program or uh, that are uh, displaced. Um, so this is some questions that we thought we thought were still um, we still wanted to to answer uh, in MSF projects or in other um, similar settings and organizations. Uh, so for example, what is the effectiveness of breastfeeding support to change feeding practices within these projects and what is the effect? of this breastfeeding support outcome in patient outcomes. Uh, how can small uh, these uh, infants uh, under caregivers be appropriately managed in the community within MSF projects? In this project, this was very difficult because of displacement and insecurity, um, and high peaks uh, of malnutrition in the, in the, in the seasonal period. Um, 
also to look at what uh, what is the influence of maternal and infant factors on the outcomes of malnutrition, which we couldn't look very much at because the data collected at the at the uh, at the program in the in the routing data collection they don't include many maternal and infant factors, so we could not analyze those in this study. And also, what are the best indicators to identify infants under six months that are more at risk? So that's for the future, but for now, thank you very much and I'm very looking forward to hear your questions or comments.